Hello, welcome to Goperio. Um, broadcasting in English. Uh, um, a video that was very, very requested uh, in the chats of my channel Goperio. And it's about uh, static lengthening using a two proportional gauge. Welcome again to Goperio. Well, I'm going to start my presentation already uh, showing that excessive GG display is the starting point of uh, 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 static prolentomy. Uh, if the patient has a normal proportion, uh, we're going to go to the, the two proportional gauge. Uh, this patient, like, like this photo, uh, uh, the patient probably needs oral surgery, right? The maxilla. Yeah, probably has to receive a leaf four with with also leaf four in in the mandible uh, to place the maxilla at at uh, its final position, or the use of Botox. We we in Brazil we use dentists are allowed to use, uh, do Botox. I I am not a dentist that a periodontist that does this procedures, but you can relax some of the the muscles. So you can you can actually bring this this lip down, but we we know that this this tooth is in proportion, so we we cannot uh, use anything uh, regarding the uh, static prolengthening. Now, if you have a, a, a excessive gingival display, uh, a tooth without proportion, with abrasions, um, without abrasions, sorry. Then the the tooth proportional gauge, the tooth proportional gauge is gonna be awesome. So you can you can do a soft tissue surgery, you can do a, a, a removal of your bone, and you uh, it, it's it's a classic case. In this case, that I'm gonna show with abrasions. Another thing, I think the, that it has to, be, uh, to have a pre-prosthetic uh, uh, prosthetic. Uh, uh, treatment plan, uh, maybe do a, 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 a wax up, uh, develop guides to see where you actually have to be uh, incising to have the future prosthetic uh, uh, treatment plan. Well, you have uh, you have some uh, digital tools to do that. You uh, we, you have also lab tools. I uh, like a lot lab tools doing doing the the, the a simple uh, wax up the case, uh, performing a, a, a surgical guide, and then going for for your your crown lengthening. But, but but look at that. When you have a, a, pro, a proportion of width width and height. What this gauge does is uh, usually the lines of the center incisors goes to the out, outside point of the red line. Okay, sometimes it's not exactly. It shows like there is a percentage of teeth that does that or not. But this proportion, if you just place the tooth, I digitally. Uh, place the tooth here in the in the fine the final position. You you see that this patient has no tooth abrasion, and if I just do my my incision based on this area here, I'm gonna have a tooth in proportion. To having a tooth in proportion, you're gonna have probably great results. For lateral incisors, usually uh, the bar sets up at this outside point of not necessarily outside point of the, the, the blue line and uh, canines is actually at the middle point of the, the red line. But I, I don't attain about where the, the most cases set up. If, if, I get a, if I get a patient that has uh, it hits the midline of your, your, uh, of your red line on both sides, I'm gonna do the midline in the in the top side. It's simple as that. You don't need a lab to do anything. So you can do uh, some digital smile, uh, check probing, of, of course. Uh, here here is the usage. Um, 
And then follow this 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 uh, this uh, gauge. You just do your you perform your incisions. Like uh, I know my incision here was performed by a student, but uh, it's really well done. Follow the proportion. See how the proportion of of your lateral size with the center size already in place. Now you you raise this flap. Uh, I'm against gingivectomy. Uh, I don't know um, if uh, and I'm against flapless crown lengthening. I, I need to see this bone. So once once I finish my my outline of, of your your gingival, let's say outline, I open it and usually the bone in those cases are really close to CJ. So what I do, I remove the bone uh, uh, to give it a new biological width. Okay, uh, so you see the before and after uh, suture. This patient didn't care too much about the 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 um, uh, oral hygiene. Uh, we need to do some some touch-ups in the case. Uh, I use a diamond bird just to 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 remove the, that excess fibrous tissue. I give this patient a, a, a mouth rinse called Blue M, and she she performed better at the final stage. And this is the end result. Only what. Uh, uh, two proportional gauge. Let's go for one more case. This is the beginning and final case. Uh, look at that. I can see, we can see as a dentist that this tooth does not have uh, 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 incisor uh, uh, abrasions and the tooth is not in proportion. So once you place, look at that. The outside portion in the, in the center incisor and in the, in it, go, it needs to go to be proportional, the, your, your incision needs to go up to this level here, okay? For lateral incisors is the lateral, but again, I don't follow, I just follow that whatever whatever the, the width is, I follow the mark in the, in the height, okay? So this is the, my digital way to show the patients how she's gonna uh, look like after the surgery, okay? Here I did all my two surgery, uh, my, my two proportional gauge. I, I did my incision based on tooth proportion. Did also a phrenectomy. Um, here's a look at our 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 bone is actually look how many many crown like how much crown is clinically exposed and the bone is right here the CJ. So. What I do, I use a technique that I'm going to show you in a little bit. Remove this bone in, in about like 15 minutes, okay? So suturing in the end, okay? And this is the patient before and this is the patient after. Finally, I just want to show how do I do my, my crown lengthening. First, I use the proportional gauge, a tooth well indicated without tooth abrasion, not a skeletal patient. Uh, I perform on my incisions. After that, I'll, uh, once everything is perfect, I don't open the incisions to do some touch-ups later. It's difficult. When, once I see that the, the smile or the, the perform or the gingival smile is perfect, I use my T technique. What is my T technique? It's actually being a burn, okay? I replace this flap like matching the papilla because I don't cut the papilla, just take the the the, the Let's say the, the, the vestibular third. I place uh, this flap in its final position and I start to do marks just at the buckle until I find three to four millimeters. Instead of removing little by little, by tooth by tooth, I end up going to having like every tooth I have already a mark where should I go. So I do kind of a crown lengthening backwards. I don't go from here and I go to, to all the way to the, the top. I know here is my is my biological way that I want. So I just start with diamond burrs. So if you, you want to use chisels, whatever whatever you, instruments you, you're comfortable with, I come back and I remove my bone. Okay, and then to have like uh, uh, results like that. Um, this frenum, I think it was affecting the papilla. I already removed this frenum. Uh, look already the, the tooth proportion uh, <coughs> in place. As a result, I did the tooth proportional gauge. And here's the, the, the final patient before and after with a simple surgery, uh, surgery of 40, 40, 45 minutes with only one instrument. And 
I would like to thank you for hearing me, and I'm going to start doing more uh, English uh, 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 videos. So uh, I hope you you enjoyed it, and stick up a go better. It's a nice channel. Take care.